THAT MEANS IF YOU RECEIVE SALVATION AS A GRACE GIFT, YOU DIDN'T EARN IT, EVEN IN THE MIDST OF YOUR SIN, WHILE YOU WERE A SINNER, CHRIST DIED FOR YOU. IF YOU RECEIVE SALVATION BY GRACE, YOU SHOULD RECEIVE HEALING BY GRACE. THE ONLY THING WITH THAT IS THAT PAUL WAS ASKING FOR HEALING AND GOD DID NOT HEAL HIM. INSTEAD, GOD SAID, YOUR, MY GRACE, HE SAYS, MY GRACE IS SUFFICIENT FOR YOU. MY GRACE IS SUFFICIENT FOR YOU. YOU WILL BE, I WILL MAKE MYSELF STRONG IN YOU IN YOUR WEAKNESS. SO WE GOT TO EXPLAIN THAT, RIGHT? Um, I used to listen to Andrew Womack. He's actually a good, really good teacher, very subtle, good teacher, easy to listen to and easy to understand. Um, and uh, But now it's just certain things that I kind of catch as red flags. The majority of it is actually really good. There's one, one of them is that is the whole healing, like God wants to heal every single um, heart health issue or something that you're you're suffering from like let's say diabetes or some kind of pain or anything even blindness or anything like that that you're suffering uh, suffering with he can heal depending on your faith by grace through faith not based on works or anything like that is based on your your faith right based on your faith and I I see that as an error. All right, because God already healed your soul. If you are born again, you are healed. You are healed, filled with the Holy Spirit and sealed with the Holy Spirit. So if you do still have some kind of disease that's not causing you to sin, the Lord will give you grace or comfort to withstand that pain or anything that you're going through because of that that uh, uh, infirmity that you're going through, right? That's what Paul had. So let's go into this little section of his video, see what he says, because, um, again, the whole healing thing, I see it as a red flag. Let me know what you think in the, in the comment section. Uh, any healing that you hear about in the Bible, he's talking about healing of something that's causing you to sin. Like, let's, let's say a disease of drunkenness that that's actually a disease that's a, a disease that god can heal you from from drunkenness from adultery from fornication from homosexuality all that god can heal you from covetousness he can heal you those are the type of healings that god can for sure 100 percent give you let's begin thanks you will hear people say this all the time, that I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Well, that's not true. I was an old sinner. And there was a time that me recognizing that I was an old sinner was a good thing because it made me quit trusting in myself and thinking I could save myself. And so it drove me to God. But once I came to God and got born again, I'm not an old sinner anymore. I was an old sinner, but I got born again. And now I am the righteousness of God. And I have to approach God on the basis of what Jesus has done and not on the basis of what I've done. And it's not a mixture of the two. It's not I approach God through Jesus and say, and Father, I know that Jesus opened up the door, but now I've also added to it and I'm holy and now you accept me through Jesus and through myself. Yeah, that's, see, that's, which is true. Like, no, it's not by works. We do good works because we're saved, because we're serving the Lord. We, we, we want to serve the Lord. We have been saved. The word says that we've been given the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt us. But nevertheless, we will not rejoice in that the spirits are subject to us, but rather rejoice because our names are written in heaven. If you are born again, your name has been written in heaven. You should be rejoicing. You should be wanting to share the gospel, share the good news, because the good news is that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, resurrected, and we have forgiveness of sins. He has gone to the cross for us. By grace, through faith, we are saved, not by works. We don't, we, we're not made righteous by works. We, we, we don't stand in righteousness in front of God 
because of our works. It's by grace through faith always. We do good works because we're saved. No, it's either what Jesus did for you and you have access to God through Him or you have access to God through yourself, which I'm just giving you a little hint. None of you can make it based on your own. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There you go. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We still, we're still sinners. We have to be careful with the flesh. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So you have to always submit yourself unto the Lord. You have to, because this world, it is dangerous out there. In, in Psalms 23, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Right? Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. The, the, the rod and the staff of the Lord is your guidance. It gives you conviction. It gives you wisdom, knowledge. It gives you uh, truth. That way you remain walking uprightly, right? Walking by faith. So you either approach God on the basis of what Jesus has done or on the basis of what you've done, which is way short, but you can't mix the two. Yeah. The, the word says that we all have come short of the glory of God. We, you will come short. You will come short. You must believe and you must uh, be righteous by grace through faith alone. If you don't do that, you're always going to fall short. You're never going to be, be able to do enough. It, it's not enough. It's not enough. You're always going to fall short and it's going to be overwhelming. You're going to have a burden on you. You're going to be overwhelmed, all that. You be, you're going to be anxious. You're going to be unsure. You're going to start doubting. Oh, man, it gets crazy. It's not a combination of the two. It's not part grace and then part faith. And this is where so many people miss it. Did you know when people get born again, they come to the Lord and they recognize that they need salvation. And so they ask God to forgive them. And here they are, a total sinner. They hadn't been going to church. They hadn't been paying their tithes. They hadn't been holy. They had nothing to offer God, but they heard somebody say that Jesus paid the price and you can be accepted with God through what Jesus did. So they Amen. just throw themselves on Jesus and confess Him as their Lord and they receive salvation. That's great. But yep. then they go to church and they go to church and they're told that if you don't pray and if you don't study the Word and if you don't pay your tithes and if you don't come to church and if you don't read the Bible so many hours a day. God won't answer your prayers. God is upset. That is false. That is false. The only reason that we should, you, you should be wanting to read the Bible. You want, you want to know more. You want to know about the benefits. You want to know about the here and after. You want to know about heaven. You want to know about, it, you know, the knowledge of, of the Lord. The, the word says that my people are being destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Once you are born again, you are sealed, filled, healed by the Holy Spirit. But now it's time for you to walk by faith. How do you, how do you learn how to walk? By receiving instruction. Right there in 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that all scripture has been given in inspir with inspiration of God. Right? For correction, for instruction and righteousness that the man and woman of God sh shall be equipped thoroughly equipped for every good work you you know that's that's why you should want to study want to go and read the word right but no you are not made righteous because you're doing more than others you're going to church you're doing no you are righteous already the lord has accepted you and that person has a tendency to say well wait a minute i hadn't done any of those things before i got born again and yet God forgave me of my sins. Seems like that's the greatest miracle that there is. How come now I've got to do all these things? The average church will preach salvation, that initial experience where you get your sins forgiven and become born again. They will preach that by grace, but then they'll begin to start preaching that you receive everything else by your performance. You know, if a person was to come up in one of my meetings and they said, I want to be saved. And if I had a word of knowledge and said, well, boy, you need to be saved because God showed me that you just committed adultery. You're living in adultery. If a person truly heard the gospel, 
that you aren't saved because of your goodness. You're saved by what Jesus did. And if I had that word of knowledge and showed that they were a adulterer, did you know that wouldn't keep them from getting saved? And as a matter of fact, they'd say, that's the reason I need a Savior. That's the reason I want to make Jesus my Savior. And they could go ahead and believe, and they could receive salvation even though they were an adulterer. I believe most people understand that. But then once you get born again, you are forgiven. But now go out and just get mad with your mate on the way to church. Just don't read your Bible. Don't pay your tithes. Don't do something that's relatively small compared to this adultery. And if a person was to come forward in a prayer line after they're born again, but they still were failing in some area, and if I had a word of knowledge and said, boy, you hadn't been seeking the Lord the way you should, the average Christian would just immediately say, well, now I know why God isn't healing me, why my healing isn't manifest. Because you relate God's power in your life to your performance. See, you didn't do that to get born again. Your performance, even if I had a word of knowledge and shown you how bad it was, it would have driven you to salvation, saying that's why I need a Savior. But now that you're born again, most people don't go by the same rule. It says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, "...as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him." So he's saying that uh, uh, you don't receive a certain blessing like a healing, right? Because like I said, Andrew Womack, he actually preaches that you can be healed of a uh, disease, a uh, physical disease, you know, according to the power that is in you. If you believe, right, it comes down by, by faith, by faith, word of faith. This, this type of preaching is called word of faith, right? And uh, so a lot of people, he's going against those that preach works. Works, it's not about works to receive your healing. It's just about faith. The reason you are not being healed of your physical infirmity is because it's by grace through faith, right? By believing. Just like how you got saved, same thing. You can be healed of your physical infirmity by grace through faith, by believing, not by work. So he's saying that some churches are preaching that you must perform uh, and you must read your, your Bible constantly. You must tithe. You must you must do this and that in order to receive your healing. But no, it's, it's neither. It's neither. It's, a, it's whatever God wants you. He, he already healed you. You should be rejoicing. Rejoicing. Yeah, I know. I, I get it. You know, sometimes we go through physical infirmities or diseases and we must trust the Lord. We must trust the Lord. Uh, you can pray for healing, and yes, he can heal, but according to his purpose, according to what he has for you. Because remember, right there with Paul, he said, uh, my strength is made bigger in you, in your weakness. When you are weak, when you are, are in need, that's when you become strong in the Lord. That means if you receive salvation as a grace gift, you didn't earn it, even in the midst of your sin, while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. If you receive salvation by grace, you should receive healing by grace. There it is. So he does heal you of drunkenness, adultery, fornication, being a thief, stealing, uh, homosexuality, uh, practicing witchcraft, so on and so on. But physical infirmity, not necessarily. All right, because always go back to Paul. He was, Paul asked the Lord like three or five times, Lord, remove this infirmity. And God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. My, my strength is made bigger in you and your weakness. You should receive prosperity by grace. There it is again. There's, there's no such thing. What kind of prosperity? The only prosperity that we should be asking for is spiritual prosperity, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, faithfulness, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control, right? All the, that's the blessing. Knowledge, truth, wisdom, that's prosperity. But a lot of times, that's another red flag that I see with Andrew Womack. He, he wants to... Uh, make 
more prosperity in material. We're talking about material now here, prosperity and material, money, finances. No, because then there's the other scripture where it says life is not about material stuff. It doesn't it consist of the things that you have, it says right there in the gospel of Luke. But he preaches prosperity comes by grace through faith as well, not by your works. So you must believe these things and you will have material prosperity, financial prosperity. That's not true. You should receive God flowing through you and using you by grace, not by performance. But see, most churches will preach salvation by grace, but then everything that comes as a result of salvation, healing, deliverance, prosperity, etc., is performance oriented, and you've got to perform. That's not understanding things properly. You don't understand that the war is over. You don't understand that Jesus paid the whole price. You aren't in agreement with those angels that sang glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. You've got to come to the end of yourself. And next week, starting on Christmas Day, I'm going to be sharing some things with you that are some of the most radical things I've ever heard. Hebrews chapter 9 and chapter 10, that he, we have been forgiven of all sin. There you have it right there. So those are two red flags, and I'm going to try to remember these things. There's a couple of things. I need to actually write them down because there's some of these preachers that are preaching uh, prosperity, uh, preaching on prosperity, the word of faith, um, even Christians having demons in them, so on and so on. So that's those are two red flags from Andrew Womack, and that's why I don't really listen to him as much. Everything else, as you can see, is pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, he preaches the whole prosperity gospel, and everybody can can be healed by faith, including physical healing. So, but that's not true. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you like these. Don't forget, help me by sharing this channel with somebody you want to bless. If you're new here, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. God bless you.